Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this time I'm going to talk about a Dreams creator I just discovered myself, Max17. Here we are in Max17's Dreams homepage. Let's take a look at what they've made. We're going to start with the aptly named My First Character. We're presented with a toony adventurer and so kindly given a character head template as well. I really like the sassy human quality of her walk. I think that's due to her hips being purposely brought forward a little. You can also see the accentuation of the S-curve of her back that you don't get from a standard puppet. Also you can see from this angle that shoulders back kind of posture that makes her appearance more pleasing. Next up is Orc with a K. This is a sculpture of an Orc bust. I really like the use of some looseness for the dreads. Notice the scar on the left eye. Trying that with polygons usually looks terrible. Let's take a closer look in Remix. Most of this is one piece, but there are a few things we can rip out. Some of these teeth are just spray painted cones. You can keep things simple sometimes to amazing effect. Anyone need a tooth or horn prop? It's a good idea to go into pieces like this and grab at things just to see how you might put something like this together. Next is the demons we fight. This is one of the more terrifying sculptures I've seen in Dreams. Let's just hope it stays at a safe distance. Ah! There's something you don't want to run into in the dark. I'm currently trying to convert this into a puppet. But one thing anyone can do right now is rip the head off and stick it on a character. This head is already a separate piece. Grab it, scope into the character, scope into the head, turn the head piece invisible, place the new head. Neon the Coder has a great tutorial on how to make characters this way. Click the card above for that. I'm getting freaked out just moving this into place. Creepy. Roar. I just recently became aware of Max 17 thanks to good old Captain William Stone here. This is a fantastic sculpture. I've seen a lot of good pirate content lately, but if Max 17 enters this into the pirate game jam, I predict no less than a top three finish. At the very least, MM needs to stream this. If you want to know how to sculpt an eye, stare at this for about a year. Noses, too. Overall, this reminds me of those collectible soapstone sculptures. I wouldn't mind having this on a shelf somewhere in my house. Notice the detail on the scarf and the clothes. That's not easy to get right. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but all of these are remixable, which is amazing. I took advantage of that opportunity to remove the good captain's hat and replace it with one I made. Now, my hat by itself is enormous, so this sculpture is done at a huge scale. But all of these scale down painlessly thanks to the Dreams engine. I'm pretty happy with my hat, but the captain makes it look about 10 times better. And now for something completely different. Steam machines. In case you weren't blown away by Max 17's sculpting ability, prepare to be equally impressed by animation. I want to do animations exactly like this for a steampunk title or work on eventually. I appreciate being shown that it is not only possible, but how to do it as well. We're using a lot of connectors. I wasn't able to find the logic in this scene, but we'll get to that soon enough. With the humbly named car engine. Now this is just crazy. Check out those combustion effects. Let's see how it was done. Ah, so the logic was invisible. Everything is contained in this timeline, and it's a doozy. Here's that combustion effect. It's just a loose glowing cylinder that's being resized. Very clever. You've earned yourself an imp dance. Now we have zombie. I use a photo of this as a background for my zombie vocalizations collection. Another bust with great detail in the teeth and eye area. I like the nose that rotted away as well. Just wanted to take a look inside real quick to show some things you can do with the cutout tool in sculpt mode. This sculpt has a nice jaw begging to be hinged. Maybe you could put this on a character. We can use the cutout tool to chop the head off fairly cleanly. In this case, I'm using a sphere shape. You might need to do it a few times to get it cleaned up though. You would do something similar to separate the jaw. This sculpture is unnamed, but obviously an earlier iteration of Captain William Stone. 
I want to show this because it's evidence that even the best artists go through an iterative process, constantly refining in layers. This is why it's important not to get discouraged if something doesn't turn out amazing right away. Very few people are able to do that. Going into Remix to do something with the skull in this scene, which we did earlier with the demon. Same idea, grab skull, scope in a couple of times, replace head with skull, voila. Skull guy, or gal. And now, dragon. Note to Max 17, the names on these things are a little understated. This is a static sculpture, but it inspired me to fly around the scene a bit with my imp. Desktop background, anyone? I'm trying to let this mostly speak for itself. Here's a tip, if you want to take photos and dreams of something amazing like this but the imp is getting in the way, drop a global settings gadget into the scene and turn the imp off. I'm ready for my close up Mr. DeMille. Here is Orc 2, equally as impressive as Orc 1. I wanted to show this for its effective use of the fog gadget, which I was able to find with my x-ray vision. Pretty big difference on the lighting there, you can see how that would be beneficial in a variety of settings. Next up is Sonic and Tails, a little creator style imposed on a beloved character. I'm not sure if this was published before or after the recent Sonic movie character debacle, but either way it's timely. Gotta love the teeth and nipples. Gun Animation 2. This is like similar animation examples we've seen from this creator. Get used to seeing stuff like this in actual games real soon. Let's take a look inside and see what's happening. More timeline stuff, this time integrating a couple of sounds. Notice the use of a football shaped fuzzy glow sculpt for muzzle flash. And oh by the way, it looks damn good. This is Moonlight, simple scene with some very effective lighting and also some of the best clouds seen in Dreams. Editing now for a closer look at the clouds, this is just globs of spheres with sculpture detail turned way down. Good to know. Mountain Pass is a good look at scale and also building sets for viewpoint, kind of like they would in a movie. In edit you can see there isn't anything to the back of these structures. Upon closer inspection, this mountain is a collection of smaller rocky sculpts. This is a design philosophy we're starting to see more often in Dreams. It's apparent this is an earlier attempt by Max 17 because some of the techniques are a bit rough. This is not meant as criticism, but rather to point out that even the best creators and artists will go through an adjustment period with a new tool. Here's Demon Head. This is the head we saw earlier with a bit of lighting. I'm pretty sure I saw this in the beta. In hindsight, I should have paid more attention at that point. The original gun animation. This looks familiar. The main reason I wanted to show this was for the iterative process. Also, check out the muzzle flash pre-glowing timeline sculpt discovery. Along the same lines, Dragon 2. Great example of iteration and adjustment to the tools. It's obvious from the later efforts that this person possesses significant skill and talent in this area. Nevertheless, there was a clear adjustment period. Same thing with face here. Great head sculpt, but later examples are improved. Take heart from this if you're having difficulties with the tools. Pretty much everyone does at some point. I hope you've enjoyed this journey through Max17's creations as much as I have. This is a series, and there will be more videos like this, so I'll see you next time.